most robotics competitions and whatnot, it's very task-based. So the robots are asked to do like grab a ball, put in a hoop, do something to that effect. Whereas combat robotics is, you're just gonna smash the robot and hope they stop moving so that you can win. So I'm Ryan Scholsky, and I am the captain of RoboGym Robotics. I didn't get into robotics until I was in college. Uh, in college, I decided to join a group. We ended up actually making a robot. I didn't know hardly anything about robotics, so I had to lean on some uh, insight from other members. Hi, I'm Alex Cutie. I'm a mechanical engineer, so you know I'm kind of the creative genius of the group. I'm Dan, I am the driver of Deadlift, and I am the team angle grinding specialist. My name is Michael Rouse. I work on the mechanical design, catting, and some building of the robot. Hi, my name is Matt Burkle, and I am the one non-mechanical engineer. Those guys are all the mechanical guys, but I'm the guy who does the most machining. So the mechanical wannabes, or maybe I'm the mechanical wannabe. There's, so there's a weird dynamic. Even before Deadlift was built, uh, we called ourselves RoboGym Robotics. And a lot of that was because in college, we had lifted it together. We competed around the country for the first couple of years, building various sizes of robots. Combat robotics, there's like different styles. You have like the really aggressive bots with the hard hitting weapons. You got your spinners, control bots, your lifters, your prep. There's a range of all these you know, types of offensive and defensive uh, strategies. I think the coolest moment is always when we fire up the flamethrower for the first time. Wow, this thing is going to be great. <laughs> so we were building a robot in my garage here, and we needed to get parts shipped to here. We ended up switching over to Fictive for our new configuration here because it was a lot of uh, tolerance issues that we had from previous manufacturers. You know, the damage is huge after every fight. Uh, no matter what it is, things get bent out of shape, things get broken off, and you know, you don't have an unlimited supply of spares. That's where the Fictive process has helped us the most is just having that feedback on our parts and uh, being able to make changes on the fly quickly in order to wrap up a design and then get the parts made. So when we're ready to order, we upload our parts, they get us an automatic quote, and once we're happy with the quantities, we order it, and within a week or two, they're, they're at our doorstep. You're on a limited timetable, you're on a limited budget. Um, it's expensive to get these parts recut. I mean, they're all custom machine, very you know precision parts, so. Getting them done the right way the first time is absolutely critical. Competitions are usually one in the pits. You know, when it's boom, 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 you're fighting, you know, twice in a few hours. You don't have much time to fix the robot if anything's damaged. So having spare parts ready and still have the robot ready to go will really win you championships. I mean, I feel very grateful that I have these friends, I mean, every year, because we don't get together only because of robotics. It's a really fun and fulfilling aspect of my life. We're all like really great friends that, you know, know each other back in college, have been through a lot of both highs and lows. And, you know, being able to do combat robotics and, you know, be on BattleBots is just a really unique and, and rewarding experience to, you know, have a lot of fun with your buddies and, and build really cool stuff. It's more than a hobby, right? It's like we all derive satisfaction and happiness from, and we all get to share that with each other. To get together to, you know, go beat the crap out of someone else's, you know, hundreds of hours of work is even better than that.